a quadratic function or a parabola graph is something that has a square in it because the word quadratic means squared. So the formula is going to be y equals a with x squared and that's how you know it's going to be a parabola and then you're adding q on which is a constant. So parabolas look like this. They're either going to be ones that go towards the top or ones that go towards the bottom and we refer to that as a happy parabola or a sad parabola because it looks like a happy mouth or a sad mouth and we can learn that from looking at the formula. Okay so the formula tells us how we can draw the graph and it has lots of information embedded in it. Firstly the Q value. So the Q value tells us what the vertical shift is. So that is shift up on the axes or down. If it is a shift up you'll have a positive Q value like plus 4 and if it is a shift down then you're going to have a negative value like negative 4 and that tells you how far up and down this parabola is on the axes. For these quadratic expressions where there's no other values inside, there's no B's, there's no C's, there's no P's, that is also the y-intercept. So it would be that value there or that value there. And you can see that it's in the middle of the parabola. For other parabolas which you'll do in grade 11, that does not work the same way. But for these, when you get it of the form ax squared plus q, that is the y-intercept. Okay, the a value is also called the vertical stretch factor because the a value tells you how thin or how wide the graph is going to be. If you've got a really high a value, just like for the straight line graph, it becomes closer to the y-axis. And it's the same here. These arms of the parabola are closer to the y-axis because the number is higher. When the number is smaller, you get something that's a lot wider. And I've just done this one as a happy one and that one as a sad one, so you understand that they both can exist. The other thing that the A value tells you is whether or not the parabola is happy or sad. And that's really quite intuitive. So if it is positive, then it goes happy. And if it is negative, then it is sad. The next thing to look at is how to draw a parabola. We can use the table method, like you were shown for straight line graphs with the calculator, but you've got to make sure that you include a couple of critical things. You've got to have the y-intercept, which you can read off the formula, and you've got to have the x-intercepts. So if you're going to use the table method, you've got to make sure that these things are included. The other thing is you've got to plot the turning point, which is very easy. It's linked to the y-intercept. You can see here it's going to be that point and that point, which is also the y-intercept. So it is the y-intercept, but you just say that it is. And then you need to plot the axis of symmetry, which is also linked to the turning point. So axis of symmetry is merely the line that would divide the graph in half. So here you can see it's that line. It is the line x equals 0. It's the y, into, it's the y axis. And it'll also be that one over there. So those will be the axes of symmetry. So these are really easy to get and they're all linked to each other. Um, but the reason we're doing it is because this formula gets a lot more complicated in grade 11 and you're going to need to have this habit in place so that you're able to draw easily. To show you how to draw these, I'm going to use two examples. One, f of x has got a negative a value and a positive q value. And then g of x, I've used a positive a value and a negative q value. The other difference between them is this one's got a much higher a value, so it's going to be a thinner parabola, and this one's got something that's less than 1. So a smaller a value is going to give you the wider parabola. Okay, so with all of these, we're going to start with the y-intercept for both of them. So the y-intercept, remember, I can just read off the q-value. I can also say let x equal 0, so I'm going to show you that step. So I'm going to let x equal 0, which means I'm going to have y equals x is 0, so I'm going to have negative 2 times 0 squared plus 8, so that's going to be 8. 
So y is going to equal 8. Now it's important to put down what the point is so that we don't confuse this with points of intersection. This is the y-intercept. Because it is the y-intercept, you're dealing with a point where x is 0. So it's the point 0 for x and 8 for y. Okay, the next thing is to get the x-intercepts. So this was the y-intercepts, the y-intercept, just one of them. Then the next thing is I'm going to get the two x-intercepts, which is going to be the roots of the equation, making this equal 0, because for the x-intercept, you are going to let y equal 0. This one is a little bit more complex to solve. You can't just see it from the formula. So I'm going to say 0, because remember f of x is another way of saying y, and we're trying to make y 0. So f of x, which is 0, is going to equal negative 2x squared plus 8. I'm now going to solve this equation. It's a quadratic equation. There's an x squared in it, which means I'm going to get out two answers, which is exactly what I want, because the x-intercepts, there's going to be two of them, as you can see, and they're going to be symmetrical about the, the y-axis. Okay, so I'm going to move that 8 across, divide through by negative 2, so I'm going to have 4 equals x squared. Now, I know that if I move this across and I say uh, x squared minus 4, I have a difference of 2 squares, I get out 2 answers. You can do it that way, or you can just remember that every time you square root, you've got to square root and go plus and minus on the other side. So that means I've got two values. I've got x equals 2 or x equals negative 2. The points are as follows. You're going to have negative 2 first with 0 because that's towards the left of the Cartesian plane and the other point is going to be 2 and 0. Okay, so I've done the y-intercept and I've done the two x-intercepts. I said that the turning point and the axis of symmetry must be plotted, but they're really easy to do with this type of graph. So the y-intercept is going to be the same point as the turning point. So I'm going to plot it, and what could happen here is I could be asked for it. So I must label it when I draw the graph, and I'll show you how to do that in a moment once we've done the blue one. And then the axis of symmetry as I showed you earlier, it's that green line down the middle. For these graphs, the axis of symmetry is always the line x equals 0. Remember that it's a line. And you will plot it and show what it is. And they could actually ask you for it as a question. And you will say that the axis of symmetry is the line x equals 0. OK, on to g of x. g of x is going to be slightly different. But we're going to follow the same formula. This time I'm going to shortcut the y-intercept because really you can just read it on there. So the y-intercept is merely the point where x is 0 and y is negative 18. So that's going to be plotted quite far down. Then for the x-intercept we're going to follow the same procedure. We're going to let y equal 0. Now this is not the same as simultaneous equations where when you get the x and the y you put them together as points. Here I'm going to get the y-intercept which is going to be naught and then y and then the x-intercepts is going to be a number for x or two of them and then your y value is going to be zero. Don't get them confused, it's a very common error. Okay, so letting y equal zero here, I have zero equals a half x squared minus 18. I'm going to move the 18 across and I'm going to have positive 18 equals a half x squared. Now I've got to divide through by a half. So 18 divided by a half is the same as 18 times 2, so that's 36. And again, I can either move the 36 across and do a difference of two squares, or I can remember that when I square root, it goes plus or minus. So that means x equals negative 6 or positive 6. So my points, and I really, really recommend you write them down and you actually use the word points. I'm going to have negative 6 and 0, and I'm going to have 6 and 0. Okay, luckily, with a turning point, it's the same story. The turning point is the y-intercept, so I've actually done that for both of them. 
and the axis of symmetry for these graphs is always the same. So I can plot it on the graph or I can answer it if it is a question related to the graph but I'm sure that I know where it is because the formula dictates that that's how it needs to look. When you're drawing graphs and you're figuring out what axes to draw, you've got to look at the points that you are trying to plot. And it doesn't have to be absolutely accurate. It can't be um, inaccurate to the point where you've put negative things where positive ones should be and so on. But I'm just sketching it. That's why it's called a sketch. It's not absolutely perfect. You're not going to read information off in the way that you would if it was, say, data handling. Okay, so for the first graph, my red one, I've got to plot the points negative 2 and then positive 2 with 0. And then for the, the blue one, it's 6, it's negative 6 and 6. So I'm just going to take a bit of an estimate. I'm going to call that uh, negative 2. And I'm going to call that one 2. And then I also know that I've got to plot those guys. So I'm just going to sort of estimate a bit bigger. Make that negative 6. That would be 4. This would be 6. Okay, and then for the red graph, I've got to go up to the y-intercept. The y-intercept is 8, so I'm going to say, let's make that 5 and that 10. And then for the blue graph, I've got to plot negative 18. So I'm going to say, okay, if that's 5, then we've got 5, 10, 15, 20. So 18 is going to be somewhere around here. So I'm just going to call that 10, negative 10. I'm going to call this one negative 20. So you'll see the rest of it's going to go relatively easily after here. Right, plotting the red one. And I, I know what shape it is because the points make it really obvious. But also it's, it's a sad graph because it's got a negative A value. So I know that it's going to go like that. So I'm going to plot in my x-intercept. So that one, it's these two here. And then I know that the, the y-intercepts is 8, so to make it just under the 10 there. And then I'm going to label it, just to make sure that it's really obvious what I'm doing. You also get marked for that, so you must do it. And then I know how this graph's going to go. So I'm going to freehand it. Um, and I know that it's got a curve, and I've got to put little arrows on the bottom, so I'm going to do that. It's not going to be perfect. Use a pencil. You always have to do graphs in pencil anyway. But you get the idea. That's why it's called a sketch. Okay. Then my blue graph is going to be on 6 and negative 6. So those are my y-intercepts. And I know this one's a happy graph because its a value is positive. Its y-intercept is negative 18, so I'm going to make it over there. And you can see this is this graph's going to be quite a lot wider. Okay, so at this point, um, I may have to work out the uh, points of intersection. So it might be more useful if I went and added on arms to be a little bit longer. I could do that. This would be the points of intersection. They will be symmetrical even though the graph doesn't make it look like that. It depends if they need you to do it or not, whether you're going to be completely accurate about that. Don't forget to label the graphs, label the axes, label the scales, label all the points that you can, although these are all done. You can see that the axis of symmetry is there. It's the line x equals 0, and the turning point, they're both there as well. You've actually labeled them. Actually, I must label this one, so it's going to be 0 and negative 18. Okay, for basic graph interpretation, they'll give you drawings like what we just did, and then they'll ask you to do something with it and to, to look at information on it. Okay, so the classic one is to ask for domain and range. These are one mark each, but they're, um, they're easy marks. They're free marks as far as I'm concerned. Okay, so to be able to tell the domain, you're looking for how far left and right. So how far does it go that way? and how far does it go this way. So for the red graph, the domain is anything to negative infinity all the way up to positive infinity. So that can be pretty much any number, which is why we can write x as an element of real numbers. The other way that we can write is we can actually say x goes from negative infinity to positive infinity. So you can write it either of those two ways. If we look at the domain of the blue graph, it's the same. It's a happy graph compared to a sad one, but that doesn't affect the x values. It's going infinitely left and infinitely towards the right as this thing expands, just the same as the red one. So it's exactly the same. We can say x is an element of real numbers, or we can write it like that. The range is how far up and how far down. With a red graph, 
it can go infinitely down, but it caps out at the top at 8. That's the maximum value of the graph. So the range is a y interval, and for the red graph it goes from negative infinity all the way up to 8. So we write it like that. Remember that 8 is still part of the graph, so it is included, so it gets a square bracket there. Another way to write it, if you prefer set builder notation, is to say y is anything less than 8, but it also includes 8. So that's why we have the including sign there as well. For the blue graph, we have the range going from negative 18 all the way up to positive infinity. So again, you can write it like that, or you can just say y is anything greater than or equal to negative 18. Another thing that's really easy to read off the graph and easy marks is when they ask for the minimum or maximum value of the graph. They're basically asking for the y value because the y value is the graph. The graph is a y is a function of x, so they're asking for the maximum or minimum y value. You're simply going to read this off the graph. What's the turning point? Okay, so what we must just remember is that for a minimum value, it's going to be like the blue graph. It's going to be a happy graph because a happy graph has a minimum that goes infinitely up and a maximum will be had by a graph that goes infinitely down. So you're just going to read off the turning point. Another classic question is they say for which values of x does the graph increase or decrease? And it sounds a lot harder than it is. For this one you're going to use a ruler test. So if we look at the red graph and we move the ruler across, I know it's see-through but if you follow your finger or pencil on the graph itself and you move left to right, so if I go like this and I say, okay, as I move left to right, what's happening? Here, I'm going up all until the turning point and then here, from the turning point onwards on the red graph, I go down. So that means it increases till the turning point and decreases to infinity after that. The blue graph will be the opposite. It, it, in, it decreases going down till the turning point then at the turning point it goes up. So for the red graph increasing, decreasing for the blue graph decreasing, increasing and again we're just going to write that as intervals like we do when we are deciding what the domain and range are so just for which values of x is the graph increasing and decreasing. Okay so for the red graph it's increasing for when x is anything from negative infinity up to where x is 0. So negative infinity up to the x value here which is 0 because they asked for the values of x. Okay, so it's increasing from when x is an element of negative infinity all the way to 0. Now what is it doing at 0? Is it increasing or decreasing? We actually call that a stationary point. So it's not increasing and it's not decreasing. That's the one place where it's actually not doing anything. So we're going to exclude them. Okay. It is then decreasing from that point to positive infinity. So it's increasing for x is an element of 0 up until positive infinity. And again, we're going to exclude them both. For the blue graph, it's the opposite. The blue graph is in is um, increasing only here. It's increasing from where x is 0 all the way to positive infinity and it's decreasing when x is from negative infinity up until 0. So they're basically the opposite. And these are relatively simple. They get a bit more complicated in grade 11, but this is about as difficult as they get for now. Sometimes when there are two graphs that intersect two parabolas, you can see where they intersect and you can just read it off the graph. If that's the case, that's great. Uh, sometimes they will ask you to find the points of intersection algebraically. Okay, there's gonna be two when there's two parabolas. And what you're gonna do is exactly the same as for two straight lines. You're going to equate the two formulae and you're going to solve simultaneously. So I'm going to take formulae that work, the ones I was using with the red and blue graphs don't work um, at your level. So let's say I've got h of x and I'm going to call this one, um, let's say it's x squared minus 9. 
and then we're going to have j of x and that one's going to be a negative one so it'll kind of look like that sort of okay so remember that when you have two points when you have two points of intersection you're going to get two answers out it's going to be a quadratic equation and that's exactly what we've got here so I'm going to make them equal to each other remember that's a, a way of saying y and that's also a way of saying y and when we say that the graphs intersect we're telling you that the y values are the same in that moment so I'm going to say x squared minus 9 equals negative x squared minus 1 and then I'm going to equate them okay so moving that one across I've got 2x squared and moving that one across I've got negative 1 plus 8 plus 9 I'm going to get 8 okay so x squared equals 4 remember that when I root them I have plus or minus in my answer so that means x equals plus or minus 2 so those points where the two graphs intersect here are the points where x is negative 2 and something else but I don't know the something else and this is where these are very different to just getting the intercepts and you've got to not get them confused so this I don't have the y value yet I still have to work it out okay to get the y value I've got to sub in my negative 2 and 2 back into one of the formulas and I'm going to choose the first one so to get the y values out I'm going to say for the first one y equals 2 squared minus 9 so it's that one and that gives me negative 5 so when y is 2 when x is 2 y is negative 5 okay this these will be symmetrical so this is also going to be negative 5 but I'm still going to show you how it works so when x is negative 2 I also get out negative 5 okay it's really important that you see that this is not the same as getting intercepts okay so these are my two points of intersection and they would be okay it's obviously not this graph but it would be the two symmetrical points on the two graphs when you are asked to find the equation of a parabola you're going to get given information or you're going to get given a diagram it's important to be able to read off the diagram what you're given so the formula for the parabola that we're dealing with at the moment is this when you are getting the equation the the equation of um, a function is a function where y is a function of x so you're always going to have a y in the answer and an x squared in the answer but what you've got to do is you've got to get a and a q so what you're actually doing is you're finding a and you're finding q when you can get those into the formula then you have your answer okay so let's say um, type 1 you are given the turning point you can either read it off the graph or you're given it as information and let's say you're given a point it's always two things that you get given so something and a point turning point and then another point or two points or x intercepts you always get two things okay so given the turning point and a point um, what you're going to do is you're going to sub in the y value for the turning point okay remember that the q value is the y value for the turning point so you're just going to sub it in so if you're given the turning point you're going to sub in because it's going to be an x and y you're going to sub it into q you're going to sub the y value into q and there you go you've got q what do you then do to get a well you've got another point you've got a point which is point x and y so it's two and three or whatever and you're going to sub that into the equation and then you're going to be able to solve for a once you've got a then you're going to say y equals you can have a number there x squared plus a number the other type that you can be given is you can be given the two intercepts to um, you can be given x1 and x2 we're going to call them okay and then you're going to use a special formula this one's pretty cool you're going to learn this off by heart and you're going to sub in whatever those are you're going to sub in that value so if it's 3 and negative 3 or whatever it is you're going to sub in remember that you might be minusing a negative so just take care there the one point goes in there the other point goes in there that x stays the same 
the y stays the same and then you're going to need to be given another point so that you're able to sub in to get a so you're given that and you're given a point exactly the same sub in sub in and then for your x and y you're going to sub in that point x and y and solve for a your final answer will still look like that we've got to have a y and an x in the final answer